Hello all. Today I will explain the topic on behalf of Omar Almani. First of all, I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Abdul Muniam Al Tawak and the colleagues in this course. The BET method, also known as the Brunar Emmett Teller method, is a widely used technique for measuring the surface area of porous materials, particularly solids. It was developed by Stephen Brunar, Paul Hugh Emmett, and Edward Teller in 1938 and has since become a standard method in materials science and surface chemistry. Principle The principle of the BET method is based on the physical adsorption of gas molecules onto the surface of a solid material. The method assumes the formation of a monolayer of gas adsorbed onto the surface, where the adsorption occurs through van der Waals forces. The relationship between the quantity of gas adsorbed and the relative pressure is described by the BET equation, which takes into account the multilayer adsorption and assumes a uniform surface. Now it's your turn Omar, to explain how the device works. Of course. Thanks Jennifer. At the start of the analysis there are no data on the isotherm plot yet. Instead, the sample is being held under a vacuum waiting for gas to be admitted to the analysis tube, in this case, nitrogen. We are now going to show what will happen as we start to dose gas, and we do that to predetermine relative pressures. Instead, the sample is being held under a vacuum, waiting for gas to be admitted to the analysis tube. We are now going to show what will happen as we start to dose gas, and we do that to predetermine relative pressures. And at each pressure, the complete adsorption of nitrogen will be allowed to reach a steady state, a process called equilibration. The low pressure region of the adsorption isotherm is crucial for understanding the gas adsorption behavior on a solid surface. This region represents the initial stages of adsorption, where gas molecules begin interacting with the surface and forming a monolayer. In gas adsorption, a monolayer refers to a single layer of gas molecules arranged on the solid material surface. In the low pressure regime, the adsorption isotherm exhibits a linear relationship between the amount of gas adsorbed and the pressure. This process occurs at low pressures when gas molecules interact with the surface and occupy available surface sites. The formation of a monolayer in gas adsorption refers to the arrangement of gas molecules on the surface of a solid material, where they create a single layer of coverage. This process occurs at low pressures when gas molecules interact with the surface and occupy available surface sites. The adsorption continues until the surface becomes saturated, meaning all available sites are occupied. The monolayer coverage is characterized by a linear relationship between the amount of gas adsorbed and the pressure in the low pressure regime. Understanding the formation of the monolayer is crucial for BET analysis as it provides insights into the material's surface area, porosity, and other surface properties. This information is valuable for various applications such as catalyst characterization and designing porous materials. Multilayer formation in gas adsorption occurs at higher pressures beyond the monolayer coverage. It involves the stacking of gas molecules on the surface, forming additional layers. Factors such as adsorbent adsorbate interactions and gas pressure influence multilayer formation. The relationship between the amount of gas adsorbed and the pressure becomes nonlinear in the multilayer regime. Understanding multilayer adsorption provides insights into the material's pore structure and gas storage capacity. In gas adsorption, multilayer formation occurs after the monolayer coverage, with gas molecules stacking on the surface to form additional layers. As the pressure increases further, the adsorption process reaches saturation, where all available adsorption sites are filled, and no further adsorption occurs. Saturation represents the maximum gas uptake capacity of the material and is an important parameter for applications such as gas storage. At pressures higher than saturation, Additional gas molecules may interact with the surface, but there is no net increase in adsorbed amount. Understanding saturation and studying adsorption beyond it provides insights into the material's adsorption capacity and non-ideal adsorption behavior. Now complete the explanation, Jennifer. Thank you, Omar. It was a good explanation. Instrumentation. The instrumentation used for BET measurements typically includes adsorption apparatus, this consists of a sample chamber, where the solid material is placed, and a gas supply system for introducing the adsorptive gas. Pressure measurement, a device is used to measure the pressure of the gas. Adsorption analyzer, 
an instrument measures the quantity of gas adsorbed at various pressures. Common techniques include volumetric methods, gravimetric methods, and modern automated analyzers that utilize techniques such as gas chromatography or physisorption. Applications The BET method finds applications in various fields, including characterization of porous materials. It is widely used for determining the specific surface area of materials with porous structures, such as catalysts, adsorbents, activated carbons, zeolites, and metal organic frameworks. Quality control, BET measurements can be employed to ensure the consistency and quality of materials used in industries like pharmaceuticals, ceramics, and food processing. Surface chemistry and nanotechnology, BET analysis aids in understanding the behavior of nanoparticles, thin films, and surface modifications. Disadvantages, while the BET method is a valuable technique, it has some limitations and disadvantages, sample requirements, the sample should be finely powdered and should not contain moisture or volatile components that could interfere with the adsorption process. Assumptions and limitations, the BET method assumes a uniform surface and a specific type of adsorption behavior. Real-world samples may deviate from these assumptions, leading to inaccurate results. Limited to porous materials, the BET method is primarily applicable to materials with porous structures, making it unsuitable for non-porous materials. Time-consuming, BET measurements can be time-consuming, especially when multiple pressure points need to be measured to construct the adsorption isotherm. It's worth noting that while the BET method has its limitations, it remains a widely used and valuable technique for surface area determination and characterization of porous materials. Thanks for listening.